thanks for having me. I'm so glad to uh, see you all today and tell you a little bit about Woods Humane Society, show you some animals that are here in our care. Um, I'm gonna start out by talking a little bit about what we do here and why, and then I um, am going to switch over to, um, to the mobile Zoom and show you the actual animals that are here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and, um, and get started here. All right, so Woods Humane Society is an animal shelter located in San Luis Obispo and in Atascadero, and we take care of dogs and cats. So uh, those are the only two kinds of animals we take care of here. And we were started by the Woods family, which is the black and white photo you see. And they were uh, the family that started their, the animal shelter in Napomo back in 1955. They were our county's first animal shelter. And uh, it's been going on ever since then. We're now in San Luis Obispo and Atascadero. And we're now called a humane society, which that word humane means to treat animals and others with kindness and cause them the least amount of suffering possible. So everything we do here is with that in mind to help animals that are in need of care and to do, do so while thinking of their feelings. So um, why do we need an animal shelter? Well, there's a lot of animals out there that don't have homes and we call these animals stray animals often if they are lost or roaming freely and don't have a home to live in. We also have people who um, have pets that are no longer able to take care of those pets and they need a place to bring the pets. So that's the main reason that we are here, an animal shelter. And um, a stray animal, just to go a little bit more into that, is an animal that is abandoned or lost. And it, there's nothing necessarily wild about the animal. Maybe it has uh, less uh, experience with people or with living with people, but it's, it's usually a lost pet that um, maybe got out of a fence or door and now needs a home. And there's actually an estimated 70 million of these uh, stray animals, stray dogs and cats in our country, which is a huge number. So um, we do what we can here at Woods to try to um, find homes for those 70 million to make a dent in, in bringing that number down and getting more animals into homes with families. Um, the reason there are so many is that um, not only do pets get lost and become strays, um, but they also have babies. So if they're not spayed or neutered, which is a surgery that makes it so that they, they can't uh, have more babies in the future, uh, they will have litters of kittens. And um, about six and a half million animals enter our shelters each year. So it's only a small portion of those animals that are homeless that end up in the shelter and find a home. Um, and about uh, only about 10% of those animals that come into the shelter have, have had that surgery, that spay or neuter surgery which means that a huge number of animals that are out roaming um, are having multiple litters of kittens and puppies a year. So cats can have um, two to three litters per year and dogs can have one to two. So in a few years, as you can see here, um, two dogs could have lots and lots and lots of puppies. Um, by six years, you would have 67,000 puppies from just two dogs um, at the beginning if you don't have that spay or neuter surgery. So this is why we've gotten to the, the place um, in our country where there's so many millions of animals looking for a home. So we really um, encourage people to spay and neuter their pets. Um, we have a clinic in, in both of our locations for low cost spay and neuter. And we also spay and neuter all of the animals in our care before they're available for adoption. It's a big part of what we do. Another way that we can all help to um, reduce the number of homeless pets and stray pets is to take care of our own pets. So if you have a dog or cat at home, um, you can think about a few of these things. So um, making sure that your pets are safely inside and secure. So even if they're in your backyard, um, make sure, making sure that they can't escape the backyard, um, keeping them on a leash um, and considering things like this so that the animals don't become lost. Um, because this is a big way that animals enter the shelter system is that they just get lost from their owners. Another way to help with that is to make sure your pets have ID tags and that they're microchipped. So um, the ID tag you see here, it's got their name on it and their phone number and address. And this makes it so that if your dog runs um, away or gets uh, maybe spooked by a loud noise and runs to the neighbor's house, the neighbors can call you and get your dog back to you. And same with your cat. So this is really easy, helpful thing we can all do for our dogs and cats. And the microchip is a small thing uh, about the size of a piece of rice. 
uh, that goes underneath the skin of the animal. And as you can see, the veterinarian here is scanning this dog to look up its ID number so that he can find the owner and give them a call. So a microchip is a really helpful thing. We microchip all the pets here at Woods Humane Society as well. Another thing we can all do with our own pets is before we adopt, we can plan ahead and think about all the little problems and hiccups that could come up if you get a pet. Um, so often what, you know, one of the biggest reasons that animals are surrendered to the animal shelter is because of like pet problems. So maybe a behavior that they couldn't handle, that a person couldn't handle, or maybe a surgery that was needed that was cost too much money, or maybe maybe the dog's just chewing up all the, everything in the house <laughs> and they need some training or some something like that. So you do wanna think about, think ahead and, and really consider if you're ready to have a pet and how you will handle these kinds of issues if they come up. Of course, our favorite way to help out is to adopt a pet if you are ready to handle all those issues that might come up. And you, when you adopt one animal, you do help others because you make space in the shelter for more pets to come in. And there is an adoption fee that helps us to care for more animals. So at Woods Humane Society, we care for about 3,000 a year. So a lot of animals come through here and we try to be more than just an animal shelter. We try to really care for these animals as we would for our pets of our own. Um, but of course we see a lot more, um, uh, we have space for about 200 at a time. So we have a lot of pets coming through. Um, we try to give them the care and attention, the toys, the treats, the walks, um, and the veterinary care, of course, every single day that they need. So we're doing everything we can to make them as comfortable as possible. And we also actually um, do what, what's called the five freedoms. So we protect pets' five freedoms, which um, you might not have known, but pets actually are are um, protected by law to have these five freedoms covered. So I'll run through them really quick and then we'll take a look at how these look in the shelter. So of course we protect their freedom to um, be free from hunger and thirst. So <laughs> this is kind of a funny photo. Of course, we don't feed the donuts to the dogs. We wanna feed them healthy food that will help them feel nutritious. So sometimes, um, you know, part of taking care of an animal is making sure that not only that they're getting food, but that they're getting the right amount of food, the right kind of food, and that they um, are getting a healthy diet for their kind of, for the kind of animal that they are. So we don't feed the dogs cat food and vice versa. They get a special diet just for them. So this is a dog that came to us a little overweight and needed to be put on a proper diet. And I'm happy to say she did um, get down to a proper weight and got adopted and was very happy and healthy. Um, so we do look at that. Another, the second freedom is freedom from discomfort. So again, funny, funny photo here of a, a very large dog, a very small bed. <laughs> so we want to think about the animal's comforts. Do they have the proper environment uh, to be comfortable in? Now, sometimes, um, you know, these are temporary situations for the animal. So on the left, you see a cat in a cat condo. And this is typically just for a day or two after maybe a surgery or if they're being held for veterinary care. But even with these um, smaller cat condos, we want to make sure that the cat has the freedom to move around, has a place to hide, has a, a tall place to climb up to, fresh food and water separate from its litter box. And if we were taking care of, an, of another animal like a bunny, we would want to think of what they would be comfortable with. So providing the comforts that are appropriate for them. This is another silly photo that I like to um, point out because we do wanna think about what, how are we setting up these housing areas for the animals? Would we wanna live in a place uh, where the bathroom was right by the kitchen and the bed was on the floor by the, the toilet? Probably not. And so our pets don't either. They want to have a healthy, clean environment that can be safe and sanitary for them. The third freedom is the freedom from pain, injury, disease, uh, suffering, all these kinds of things. So everything we do here is with that in mind, we wanna keep them free from discomfort and from, from pain. And so sometimes that means a surgery to remove, uh, to actually remove a leg if there has been an injury. Sometimes it just means providing medication so um, whatever their needs are, we, we are looking out for them. The veterinary team um, takes great care of the animals here. The fourth freedom is the freedom to express normal behavior. 
Um, so like I said earlier, you know, sometimes behavior issues come up. Uh, dogs and cats were not born knowing how to live in our houses and with people. So they do um, like to do things like dig um, or bark or um, hunt. Cats are natural hunters. And so we, um, as people taking care of them and bringing them into our homes, do need to provide them the, the access to have those normal behaviors. So we see some dogs here playing and digging on the beach. Um, and on the right, we see one of our veterinarians is playing with a cat and this toy is actually designed to help the cat, um, you know, feel like it simulate hunting. So they're, they're chasing the toy in, this, in a similar way that they would chase maybe a, a bug or something outside. So, um, sorry, the next freedom is the freedom from fear and distress. And this is also a big thing that we want to pay attention to. Um, we want to make sure that cats and dogs feel comfortable and happy and not scared while they're here. Um, so we do think about their feelings and we try to do everything we can to make sure that they're peaceful and calm and they're not stressed while they're here. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that and on the tour as we as I walk you guys around in a moment. Um, you can look out for ways that we have set up their rooms and their habitats to make them as comfortable as we can while they're here. And we'll also think about their feelings by doing what I call pause before you pet. So this just means that instead of walking right up to an animal and reaching out at it, you're, you're always going to want to ask for permission before you pet. You're going to um, ask the dog or the cat by looking at its body language, which if you guys are coming next Friday and the Friday after, I'll talk more about their body language on those days. Um, and then uh, we'll wait for the animal to come to us and let them sniff us before we pet them. So rather than walking right up, we let them come to us and let them sniff. Animals get to know us with their noses. And so it's always very polite to an animal to do that. So with that, all that said, I'm going to switch over here now so that I um, can take you guys to see the animals. So I will be popping up in another window in just one moment. All right, so I'm on the move now. Hopefully you guys can all see me still. I'm walking now through our front desk area of our San Luis Obispo location. And I'm headed for our cattery first. And it might get a little just glitchy for just a moment here as I walk through the door. Just hang with me and I will show you all of the kittens and cats we have. We have several different cat rooms set up for each cat. Some of these rooms are for single cats, as with Lucky here and with Smokey here. They have their own single cat rooms where they have everything they need to be happy and healthy from food and water in the back corner there, a hiding spot, a tall surfboard shelf in this case for Smokey to hop up on, and his litter box and toys and bed. So everything um, in every one of these rooms is for cat happiness. So we have the single cat rooms. And then of course, <laughs> we have the social rooms. Now this is a room full of kittens here, which is just uh, too cute to look at almost. And they're making quite a mess. Luckily, we clean every morning here. So <laughs> all of this gets swept up and cleaned up each day and then they can make a mess again. Um, but we have in here, uh, these are just uh, seven of our available kittens uh, that are available for adoption. We have the Disney kittens who are three months old. <laughs> and then we have two more kittens in this room. So we call them the Disney kittens because they were actually named after different um, Disney cats. So we've got Simba and Saber and Toulouse and Berlioz and Raja. I'm not sure I know all of those cats' names <laughs> or 
Disney names, but um, they're having a having a ball in there and having fun. Um, and so, and this cat, this is an older cat, Maui, who's hiding in his hiding box. That is a really important part of what we do here is make sure that they always have a hiding place to go to so that they, if they feel scared, they can run away from us. We have some of our master volunteers here playing with some very shy kittens. <laughs> and uh, it looks like they're helping them come out of their shell there, which is really helpful. Um, and here, I'll maybe I can uh, peek in here at Molly and Primo, who have are about 11 weeks now. And they have been here for a few weeks. So they are looking for a family to adopt them. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> and um, they are they were ready to go home. And luckily, we are having a promotion right now to adopt two kittens or cats for this, the price of one adoption. And that's because we do have so many cats and kittens right, right now at the shelter. Um, we have here on the Central Coast what's called kitten season, which is a time, a time of the year when, um, when a lot of those stray or roaming cats that we talked about, if they haven't been spayed or neutered, they often will have litters of kittens. And those litters of kittens, of course, need a home. And... Um, so we are just, um, we are at our max capacity between our both locations um, with kittens right now. And they are so adorable. These two are really, really cute. <laughs> this one, you can kind of see on its tummy, the blue tattoo that they get after they get their spay or neuter surgery. And we give them the little tattoo so that we always will be able to know if, it, if they ever got lost again from, from their owner after they get adopted. Um, a veterinarian will be able to see that tattoo and know that they've already been spayed or neutered. These two are adorable and they're named Donut and Sprinkle, which makes them somehow more adorable if it's possible. <laughs> um, I'm cruising through the cattery here. We do have a couple of shy cats that just arrived, so I won't, I won't trouble them. <laughs> and then, of course, we have a whole nother room full of kittens over here. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but we've got a pile of orange tabbies. <laughs> Looks almost like it's one big cat, but when you get closer, it's actually three. <laughs> and they are really adorable. They love snuggling up here together. We always provide these tall structures in the cat rooms so that um, the cats can have somewhere high up to jump up to. This is one of our larger rooms and there's lots of high shelves for them to hop up to. And that's just because it's a natural cat behavior to climb trees and be up high. So we always want to give them those natural, uh, the ability to do those natural behaviors while they're here. They also have a little cat patio out there so they can get some fresh air and see the, the birds and the butterflies flying by and the lizards crawling by. So they get some entertainment, it's kind of like kitty TV to have a big patio like that. So that is the cattery and I'm going to um, walk us over now to the dog area. Hopefully I don't drop you guys here. This is what I like to call the noisy part of our tour. So it, uh, the, the kitties are nice and quiet and the dogs tend to be a little bit louder. <laughs> walk through here, hopefully I don't lose you. So this is the outdoor portion of our shelter. Uh, so we're headed back to the back where the dogs are. First here is to recess four times a day. So they actually uh, get lots and lots of playtime with their friends. Um, and they get rotated out to these play yards throughout the day. We actually have seven of them around the shelter. So they're located all around us. And um, in between going to recess, they go back to their doggy bedrooms, which we call a dog kennel. So um, every morning, just like with the cattery, the dog's bedrooms get made. So they get cleaned, they get fresh blankets, they get toys, they get food and water. It's their favorite part of the day when their breakfast comes. Um, and they get to hang out in the, in the shade. So we do have a lot of newer dogs, like this dog, Cheddar. 
So I do want to be respectful and not scare them too much. So I'll try to get closer to them. Um, these two, em Ember and Cinder, are a couple of terriers that are a little bit shy. And one of them is wearing a cone. Um, they will often have to wear a cone after their neuter surgery just for a couple of days so that they don't lick their stitches. And it looks like we have a couple of puppies for you guys. So I think this morning we started out with eight of these um, shepherd hound puppies. And it looks like most of them have gotten adopted. Um, we have a couple left here. They have adorable long ears like a hound dog. And you can see they have a cozy bed, lots of food, lots of water over here, toys all over, comfy beds. So this is um, our toy bins and baskets and our blankets that get washed and cleaned off for the animals and then delivered around each morning. So it's kind of like, um, you know, it's like their doggy birthday every day. Um, this is Gouda, brand new dog I haven't met. This is Tig. He, Tig has been here for a while. He's available for adoption and he's got one blue eye, one brown eye. So handsome. Um, we do use blue kennel cards for the boys and then pink kennel cards for the girls once they're available for adoption. Um, the green kennel cards uh, help me know that these dogs just arrived. So all of these green kennel cards are dogs that <laughs> just came to us. They're waiting to see the veterinarian, waiting to make sure everything's okay with them and that they have been spayed or neutered. So um, <laughs> this guy's name is Limburger. I believe he's a shepherd mix. This one, wow, mozzarella. Wow, you're really cute. Yeah, <laughs> we have had a lot of huskies this year, it seems. This one, this we have a cheese theme going on here. This one's name is Bree. Hi, Bree. Oh, good doggy. Um, and it's actually pretty nice and calm in here. This is Shadow Ann. She's not a cheese theme. <laughs> and um, okay, here's our little melon who's been very shy. But I will try to show you her. Come here. <laughs> so she likes to hang out in her back patio. And then once I walk away, she'll probably come inside. So some of the dogs haven't had a whole lot of attention from people before in the past. So they're still getting used to all of the there she goes. Now she's inside. <laughs> They're getting used to all of this interaction with people that they don't know. This here is Bates. He's one of our very handsome Huskies. Um, and then we've got Parmigiano, brand new dog, green card. <laughs> Summer, who is another one of our beautiful Huskies who prefers to stay outside. So she really loves it out in her back patio. Doris is a little shy. <laughs> I had a feeling that might happen. It was too quiet. Okay, I have one more room to show you guys, and then um, and then I'll let you ask some questions if you have any. Um, so over here is our second room of dogs. I got them all barking, but we'll try to show you around. This is Butterscotch, who's a very handsome cattle dog, has been with us quite a while. He's a sweet boy. And he's looking for a home. He seems very mellow, very relaxed boy. This is Jackson. Jackson, hi. <laughs> uh, Jack Russell Terrier. And then we have, a, we have some new green card dogs here that I've never met. This is Feta, another cheese. Cheese dog and Manchego. Hi, Manchego. <laughs> He's a little shy. That's okay. Getting used to his new surroundings. We have a very energetic lab pup here whose name is Haven. And Haven just would love to go on all of the walks with everyone all the time, huh, Haven? Yes. <laughs> She's ready. She's ready for an adventure. We have Marble, who's not a fan of the camera. And Picnic, hello. <laughs> Hi, little Picnic. So Picnic's a terrier mix. She's adorable. She's got that cone on, but that's just for a day or two more. She got her neuter, or he got his neuter, I should say, already. <laughs> and then we have Rufus. Rufus is a bull mastiff. He's a big old boy, isn't he? Hi, Rufus. You're just so handsome. He's a very mellow dude. <laughs> 
And uh, let's see, who else can I show you here? We've got Jetty is a, a very cute girl, but um, her neighbor next door does not like me to show him on the camera. Buddy here is a, not a fan of me walking up to him. <laughs> so I will give him a lot of space here. And then Miss Nina here. Hi, Nina. <laughs> I have another husky Onyx, another sweet dog we've had for a bit. Hi, Onyx. <laughs> and Zemo. And I think before I finish up, I think I might be able to show you guys. Let me see if I might be able to show a couple more of those puppies. Yep, here we go. Puppy nap. <laughs> so we do um, move the puppies into a little room so that when we're having them meet people to uh, possibly get adopted, they, they're kind of easy for the staff to bring out to meet. So this one's getting a little nap from all, getting a break from all of his introductions today. So that is all of our dogs and cats, a uh, whirlwind of adorable kittens and puppies. Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? I'm happy to answer.